Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Tuesday, September 13th, 2022, Government Relations and Communications Committee meeting. And uh, we have usual cast of characters around here. Actually, we have a new uh, we have a new teacher representative tonight. Hi. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I, I think we met in the spring. I came yes, to the we did. From Jenny Clark, the I, microphone. I teach at the high school. <laughs> Um, and I'm representing RTA. Happy to be here. Thanks for having Excellent. me. Excellent. Yes. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. It's, it's great to have a, a teacher rep back in the fold. Um, and I will uh, hand it over to uh, Mr. Batiti for any administrative remarks he might like to make at this time. Thank you, Dr. Babson, and welcome everyone to our first meeting of the school year, our Government Relations Communications Committee. I do have a couple things. Um, you notice that our student representative is not here with us. We are in the search for a student representative. We um, will be putting a posting out in the Radnor Reader this weekend that Ms. Kevgis, the principal of the high school, sent up my way to solicit student interest in serving in that position. Um, and those people that have interest will have to can send their letter of interest and a resume of activities to Ms. Kathy Pearsall, um, teacher at the high school, if they're interested. So we'll keep you posted on the progress with that. Um, you may recall in the past there was some um, questions around can we archive the meetings from previous years? And we, in the migration to the new site, we kind of had to put that on hold and come up with a solution for getting some of that pre-2017 when we went to board docs content available for the public. So the good news is we were able to, with Ms. Klusman's help in the superintendent's office, uh, able to move a lot of this to an archives tab now that you see underneath the library. And you'll be able to see a lot of the older meetings here. Now, it's still going to be a little bit um, complicated in a way to locate the meeting because we uploaded the PDFs and there isn't really no, at this point at least, um, searching, like robust searching system. So you will still kind of have to have an idea of when this meeting took place and, and then what committee. And it is unfortunate at this time, but at least there is a place where we could put these in the interim to coming up with a more, you know, permanent solution. Um, <laughs> So wanted to just draw that attention, attention to that to the board and to the public that if you're looking for some things prior to 2017, there is a space now you can do a little bit of sleuthing. Um, and I believe that was the end of my current remarks. If I could Thank jump in there for just a moment. Um, and uh, Mr. Petiti uh, just received an opportunity to uh, go to work for Penn Charter uh, school as their chief communications officer. And while we are excited for your opportunity and, and happy for Penn Charter, we are sad for us. Uh, Mr. Petiti, just, um, you know, when you have good people, they go after good people. And uh, uh, Michael just accepted uh, just before the weekend uh, with Penn Charter. So this will be our last year CC meeting with you. And uh, you will be here with us for the board meeting this month as well. So we have plenty of time to roast him and give him a hard time still for, for a few days. Uh, but Michael, before we kick into the agenda of this meeting, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for um, 11 plus years you've been um, uh, dedicated to the district, uh, integral in obviously all of our communications and everything we've done to communicate, but also so many other projects, uh, projects that may have started with communications but stemmed and worked well, well beyond even just communications, those projects you had your hands in. And uh, your work here has had a, a huge impact. And uh, while we're sorry to see you go, we're excited for you in this next opportunity in your career as well. Thank you, Ken. I really appreciate that. And like Ken said, or Dr. Batcher said, we'll have some time to chat before the board meeting. And I can collect some more of my thoughts to maybe offer some <laughs> more information there. But it's just nice to hear that. So thank you. And I, mean, we, I will miss everyone. So. Don't worry, we're piling on the work in the next couple of weeks. Right. 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 <laughs> so I, I'd, I'd like to just open up the floor to, um, to our committee members if you'd like to offer a word to Michael. Uh, <laughs> word of thanks. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, congratulations to you and your family. It's very exciting. Yeah, I think Ken said it was sad for us, but really excited for you and the opportunities ahead for you. So best of luck. 
You deserve it. And, and Michael, yes, uh, I've, I've enjoyed working with you a lot uh, as chair of this committee now uh, for a while, and, uh, and all the best to you at uh, Penn Charter. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I'll, I'll reserve said, my comments we'll for later. I didn't mean to, 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 to <laughs> it sound like I wasn't, uh, but I will, I will comment most likely at a, a, a rain delay. The two communications rain check. people caught off guard. I can't, I can't yeah. speak. Yeah. I'm, I'm verklempt. <laughs> I'm verklempt. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to cover yeah. it for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I know, and then I had to do the whole... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Be Dr. Uh, Babb. I'm sorry. I'm, it was a, it's a, really, it's on my fault. Um, okay, so let's move to public comment. No public comment. Okay. And review of minutes. Has everyone had a chance... I'm going to make probably the most minor observation ever, but I didn't see anything about um, uh, calling the, the meeting to order there under introduction and administrative remarks. So maybe just a, a note about calling the meeting to order. Again, just <laughs> very minor, but, um, but yeah. That's all I have. All right, so with that having been done, let's move to our agenda items. And we're going to hand it back over to you, Mr. Bertitti. Thank you. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, where we are with the signage for the Modern History and Spirit Gallery, which is part of the infrastructure project happening over at the high school. Um, but I wanted to just jump right into how we got here before we start looking at you know, where we are with actually you know, installing the signage and, and that process. So you recall, I'm sure, back in October 2020, the board approved the development and construction of this Radnor History and Spirit Gallery as part of the larger, larger and previously approved Radnor High School Accessibility and Wellness Infrastructure Project. So this is the agenda item from that meeting from October 27th, you see on the screen here. Also accompanied by a screenshot of the part of the presentation provided at the meeting that helped explain this vision for the gallery at the time. What are we talking about? Um, here is the blueprint that our architect has provided us of the gallery space. So this is gonna be accessible from the rear entrance, which is a newer entrance of the high school. And you come in through that, that first red arrow into the lobby. If you make a quick right, we're gonna be talking about that wall um, on that hallway down towards the pool. And if you keep going straight, you know, come face to face with the Spirit Gallery main area. So I had another slide of renderings from the architect. I'm going to get back to that last one in a moment, but here are renderings from the architect of that space. The red walls, a couple of those will be the ones that we're going to be talking about some signage concepts in a moment. So keep those red walls in mind, but this is the sort of rendering at, at the initial stages of what that area will look like. And the thought was to have this space not only be an area for gathering for events and the community to come together, but an area for students to congregate during the school day. Um, you know, teachers could bring classes down perhaps and do lessons. You see a screen there in the exhibit. Uh, where the memorabilia will be displayed, so they'll be able to you know, show things there, um, display things. So a lot of multi-uses, you know, multi-use space. So when we discussed the, what concepts could, the space could include, um, we brought together a group of stakeholders, students, interested students, interested um, fa uh, community members, a couple board members attended, and we talked about what's our purpose for the Radnor History and Spirit Gallery and what are the guiding principles for the gallery. And we kind of came together and set, the, set it to be a, a, a dynamic space where all students, staff, members, alumni, families, and community members can learn about Radnor's rich history and be inspired for the future and to establish a welcoming and inclusive location in Radnor High School where meetings and events could take place during and after school. So this helped to guide us what, what, what we're going to conceive of for these walls um, and for this space. some of the items that you're going to be that, that were collected just to show you a, a sample some items that have been um, um, collected by 
who I, who I want to talk about a little bit later, but Jess Richter in the library, who really helped with the ar that archive room in the library and to such a degree. Um, if you had seen it prior to her getting in there with some of the students, um, it's, you know, it's unidentifiable from what it is now. So just a quick sampling of what's going to be in some of that cabinetry you saw with the screen. And there's much more than this, but just a kind of sample. So we realized also during that meeting, those meetings, those initial meetings last fall or last spring, that there was no budget defined for signage, technology, um, and other, might, other needs, maybe furniture, for that space. There was a budget to create the walls and create the area, you know, the actual construction, but nothing to actually put signage up. And that wasn't just in the spirit gallery area. That was in walls um, that were developed for signage throughout the interior. So there is the ability to put signage on the hallway leading all the way back to the fitness room. There's the ability to put signage on the entire fitness room wall, which is about 66 feet long. Um, there's the ability to put signage on the pool hallway we s I showed earlier. So all of that is outfitted for si signage and artwork if we wanted to put it there, but we didn't have any um, funding towards that. So the board, and additionally, just to, for background, um, made a fund balance appropriation for the 22-23 budget and moved 75000 for this those type of costs, signage and technology. So Dr. Hand has been working on a separate track to help with technology and working on estimates for that. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is the estimates we have for the first phase of some signage. So where in the space, if we're looking at it from above, are we talking for the first phase? So we were thinking at, at the outset, can we do all nine walls in, by launch? Because there were nine walls that we kind of identified in this project that could take signs or could take artwork. Um, and as we did some work and, and kind of went through the process, we realized we had to scale that back and have some phasing in of our signage here. Um, so we, we pinpointed certain walls that you're going to see now to do in phase one, which we hope to have by the launch of the space. Um, one and two are what we're calling the photo wall. And number seven is the swim dive wall. And you recall that's that's you know, coming in from the back rear entrance, you're going to walk right straight ahead and see that photo wall. So what that photo wall might look like is a really r rough approximation, uh, but you see we had, talking through the concepts, um, get a bunch of photos from the archives, collect p pictures from different sources, and create a, a massive collage that would span that wall 25 feet wide on the one front side, 9 feet high, potentially different likely different sizes of the photos, some depending on resolution, some blown up larger, some smaller, representing all sports, trying to achieve that equality um, guiding principle that we had, um, the, that inclusivity guiding principle that we had, and, and put as many of the, you know, all the sports represent the band, uh, fans, um, all on that wall. So it's one thing to have an idea to do that, and it's a totally other thing to actually try to collect those photos. And, um, and this is where I want to take a minute to just back, back up a little bit and thank two people in particular. One, back to Jess Richter, um, who, again, really has helped us organize the photos that we have dating back to the early 1900s in the archive and, and allowed us to create folders to place fo these in and created a process to gather these photos. And to an even greater degree, if that's possible, Jeff Bajukas, parent Jeff Bajukas, um, he is an avid Ranner fan, um, not just football, but all sports, and he has done incredible work um, to not only work with the photos that we have in the archive, but to out make outreach to parents and booster clubs and alumni to ask them, please send in your photos. We know that you have a lacrosse photo from the championship in 2015. Can you please send that to us? We know that the 1997 team won this. I know you were a student in that class. Do you know how I can get a photo? I mean, this is all volunteer stuff that this man has been doing, and it helped us accumulate 1,700 photos to pick. Um, so I can't, he was going to try to make it tonight, um, but he got tied up with a work thing, called into work. So he, but he wanted to be here to explain just the, pro the process that he kind of has, has gone through and he's, how dedicated he is to this project. And so I think we're in good hands with the photos that we have to choose from 
And the good news is the company that is going to hopefully do this for us if we, when we get there, they're going to help us with laying it out. They're going to help us with taking those files and putting them in the right sizes so that someone won't have to do that potentially, you know, all that in-house and come up with all those designs in-house. The company will actually take the files, take the assets, take some direction from us, and then give us some samples. So the ones you see on the side are just three of the many that we have. That lacrosse championship that I mentioned, I think, is the one in the center there from 2015. I think I actually took that picture. I think I was there for that. Hershey. Um, so we'll use these pictures to, get, to cover those walls that I, that I showed you earlier. Um, by looking at all these photos, we also kind of knew, well, what do we have that we can, that we vetted, that we can do that celebrates some of the you know, main, I guess, the, the major uh, athletes in our history. And we knew that if we focused on Olympians, um, that might be a way for us to do the Radnor swim dive wall. And so while you see a couple of pictures that we have in the archives of s swimming that people that weren't Olympians, they can potentially go on that collage wall. And we thought to use Mary Ellen Clark, who was a bronze medalist a diver in the 90s Olympics. I think it was 92 and 96, I think. And then Janie Barkman Brown, who is it pictured um, second from the left in the top picture. She was uh, 17 years old there, I think, in 68 when she um, swam in the 4x100 freestyle relay and won gold. So in addition to these pictures, we would put Radnor Swim Dive, let's say, on the side. As you can see, it's sort of rudimentarily there, and, and you, that might overlay it, and we would maybe have some words of inspiration, uh, you know, I, you know, some buzzwords that uh, persistence, dedication, things like that could be there, potentially. So that was our thinking for this hallway wall. And then we get to the fitness room wall. And here is where we have a lot of area to work with. Um, we were thinking here um, to celebrate a life well lived um, in someone who went well beyond the sport, um, not just football, not just baseball, not just basketball, but a man who saved the lives of you know, his fellow um, um, servicemen in, in battle, uh, Coast Guard, first ever African American um, Pro Football Hall of Famer, um, first ever um, African American um, I think with the Giants, like uh, winning, winning accomplishments with the Giants. Um, he, he's, you know, there's a, you can see it in small print, but there's a lot of different things that Emlyn Tunnell has done. Uh, Garrett Hill born and raised. Um, we have a book that he wrote called Footsteps of a Giant that we can pull some passages from, some quotes from. Um, we can really um, highlight his life, uh, not just on the field, but in service to others, um, and make this space, you know, a really, uh, a really nice tribute to him and inspire our students. So that was our thinking around this wall. Um, the the important thing to note about it is that while it seems that there are three athletes, you know, let's say focused in, on these certain these two walls, that collage wall is going to, you know, looking at it conceptually, that that wall is going to obviously house hundreds, if not a thousand photos across sports. So I think that that is going to be that representation of all sports, and then we'd have to make some decisions elsewhere. Um, and I think decisions we're making are to focus on some of these athletes from our history that have just gone above and beyond, you know, in their craft. Um, so that gives you sort of, you know, our thinking around the concepts for these spaces. Now we're going to kind of get to like the nuts and bolts part of what, where are we now and how do we start getting this work uh, kind of commissioned and begun. So there's a couple of bullet points. We'll go just before you jump into that, yeah, yeah, Mr. Rafiti, sure. and in all these things in these different walls, I mean, we're still debating what makes the most sense in what place. You know, what place we know um, we want to, you know, honor Emlyn Tunnell and, and his life 
both his Radnor, but as, as Michael said, military. Does it make sense in that fitness room? Does it make sense in another hallway? Does it make, you know, we're still balancing and trying to look. This isn't going to be just, you know, as, as Michael mentioned in the beginning, this is going to go on for a couple of years as we look at the whole building. So we do have a budget when it comes to the spirit gallery. We're focused very much on the spirit gallery and focused on the new parts of the building. Uh, but we want to continue to make sure that we are um, putting representations up in our buildings that, you know, inspire our kids, inspire our kids about the history, but also our current kids. And we have photos of the current kids and technology and their, them being involved in activities and sports and also be inspirational with it. So um, we've identified just some of the walls here that we're looking at. Um, there's, there's right now we're focusing on just some pieces for the immediate for November. But there's going to be pieces where we're looking at a larger timeline, um, two walls where we're thinking to do a history, the history not only of the school, but also ties in the history of what was going on in the country and in the world at the same time. Uh, and again, that's been a, a lot of Mr. Bajukas has been really helping us out. And also our alumni association, Patty Lee and others, have been working with Mr. Bajukas for that. So there's a lot of pieces to this uh, as we continue to move forward. Thank you, Dr. Batchel. Yes. Um, there, this will be, as we've said, phases, so which we're starting here and then we'll grow it. Um, so the initially we went out for bid for May, the end of the sec, two weeks of May there, we went out for bid for people, uh, companies to complete the signage for us. That will be design, printing, and installation. And we received one bid from BSN Sports. BSN Sports was the company that did a rebranding for us and you may have seen some flags and whatnot around the, the district in recent weeks. Uh, they created all those the branding materials. So they, they um, initially put an initial quote for approximately 49,000 for all nine walls. When we were planning out those nine walls and talking about the project, we split the project and we said, let's get a four wall quote. So BSN came back and they gave us a quote for 38, six, that note is very important. These quotes assume that we cover the entire wall. So we know we will likely be doing that, we're thinking at least, with those photo collage walls. But it's possible we'll have a more of a decal type thing, especially for the fitness room wall. It's unlikely we're going to cover 66 feet wide of art. Um, so that price will likely come down once we get the exact dimensions of the decal, let's say, that we will be affixing to the swim dive wall, that we will be putting on the fitness room wall, whatever we choose to do. Um, so unless we cover the entire wall, all walls, 25 by 9 feet in some cases, 66 feet by 12 in others, that's going to come down, that 38.6. That is why we're saying on the agenda not to exceed 39,000. So our next step would be to move an agenda item into the September 27th board meeting to approve an agreement with BSN to complete phase one of the you know, artwork for our four walls identified for 38,000, not, excuse me, not to exceed 39,000. And with that, I'm, I'm happy to receive questions. <coughs> sure. Mr. Dubois. Um Question on the bid in the sense, um, was the initial quote also a not to exceed, so that 49? So we had not gone to um, the board with that quote. Mm -hmm. So if we had, it would have been not to exceed 50, let's no, say. The the, yeah, and the reason I ask is, um, should is that something that it's, and again, I don't know, you had said that we might not do all nine walls, but if that's only 10 more than basically, mm -hmm. than the four walls, so just doing math, it sure. it sounds like would, would they, would would be uh, would be CN. So the be, most expensive uh, wall was the 66 foot fitness room yeah. wall. That was about 10,000 and change. Oh yeah, you do. Um, you do. Right? You do have them broken. And out. so yeah, they're broken down. So the walls that we're not doing then obviously are, are they're either smaller or they're you know they're, 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 whatever it is that we will be doing with those walls, they don't feel would be as much of a lift. So the costs aren't as high for those other walls. But you make a good point. Um, you know, that's something that I didn't think about in terms of. But they honor that if we wanted to move forward. I mean, they, they send in the quote for that, yeah. for the nine walls. Yeah. I would yeah. uh, assume if we that they, they would. Um, that's where um, we want to go. And that includes um, 
everything like creative production a fixation so, yeah. so they ha I mentioned that they have a component to their business where they can take your assets or your yeah. files and put them in I don't know to what degree they will allow for continued refinements of that I don't know it's not a graphic design house plus print shop plus yeah, I think they have a element of it where they can help you with laying certain things out in a simpler way I have a couple samples that I got like right before I came in from BSN um, but I don't know if it's going to be like we have a graphic uh, designer and retainer and we have can go back and forth over multiple times and and be that granular with them um, so I can't say to the degree to which we will be able to work as if we had that, but they are able to take files we send, crop things out, place them in places we would like to see them, give us a couple of iterations of them. Um, but I haven't even gotten to that stage yet yeah, working with a, that person, so I don't know to what degree we would have that that sort of specific control to that detail. And I know we have a, a broader budget on the technology and the creative for it. Well, that's yeah. another thing. Yeah. The technology budget around, like, right now looks to be around 20. So you know, we have to be careful in a way if we want to keep it under the 75 for this first stage. Um, so that taking that 50,000 would get us close to that, that number if we combine that with the technology quote that we currently have. Okay. And the purpose tonight is that we have we already budgeted these dollars. Right. We now have a contract. When we have a contract with a, so that is more than twenty five thousand, we bring those to yeah. the board. So if this was only under twenty five thousand, we would be moving forward administratively with this um, because we budgeted, we planned, and we'd be in the works. Because this is above twenty five thousand, um, just for the walls, we want to move forward. It needs board approval, so we're going to place this on the agenda. The not to exceed is not that we're concerned about them going above that it's just the reality that we believe that it's actually going to be a little less because as we get into the design we don't believe we're going to fill the whole wall yes and so we want to be able to reduce that quote and if we say 38 6 9 5 70 then they could hold us to that exact number I was we were thinking so if we say not to exceed and we reduce that we can um, you know it, it reduces because of the specifications of the artwork we can then go back and say give us a new quote at that new specifications so the, so the board approval of this next week gives um, the administration the opportunity to keep moving forward and try to have this, you know, as, as we're, we're getting close with everything with the project, we are getting close, uh, but we're trying to have some of these things done. I know, yes, I'm knocking on all the wood I can, um, and uh, but we're getting close. To, we'd like to have some of these pieces as close to November as possible. But in terms of the approved 75, Sorry, I thought it was on. So the approved 75, does that include all the signage that we need on campus? No. So the 75, if you want to get technical, would be just for that little area space that we identified as the spirit gallery. Okay? We are able to expand some of that signage and, and do multiple spaces. If, if we wanted to do that, that was kind of the proposal, instead of... In, investing all of that in the space that we might not need all of that for that space at this time, we can expand that, that investment into the fitness room, down to the hallway, into the pool room, and still do the area in the spirit gallery as well as technology in the spirit gallery. And then what about the, like, the casing that we have depicted there, like where you'll have the trophy casing and stuff? Where, is that coming out of a different... That, that I believe, and I'd have to check with Mr. Dolan, but that I believe is part of the construction. Okay. Like the, when, you know, when you look at the... Um, mock-up here. I, I believe that's accurate. I believe well, that the, yeah, the casing. Yeah. Just making sure is, we... the casing is all part of the was was part yeah. of the project. Um, there is also built in is the the furniture would be part of the soft cost of the project. <laughs> you know, putting furniture in that area. Um, but the signage is an issue that we are aware of mm -hmm. around the whole campus, yep. um, and that is a piece that I believe I'll check on it. On will share back with facilities and look but I believe all the signage that we know we want to do and we've called it the wayfinding signage and how important it is to let people know when they turn on our campus where to find things is not budgeted in the project okay and um, I think you said this earlier but then we kept referring to all sports but we we're, we're including band and cheer in this grouping 
Yes. Yes. Okay. And then um, I, you know, I, I, it's very impactful to have all these pictures, but h how have we discussed how to allow for some flexibility to, for like our new, the awards that we're going to win in the future? Because this looks, you know, we need some adaptability built in. Yes, actually, we thought that we could, thanks for reminding, reminding me, that we could leave blank spaces around potentially in, in, in the wall strategically placed to then fix the winner of the future things. Um, but we're still like in the brainstorming stage around you know, the design of that. So if we said to the designer, my hope is take these 500 photos, give us a collage, size them between you know, eight by tens, you know, eight by six by eights, five by sevens, given different sizes, and say, tell us what it looked like with some blanks in the throughout. And then they could give us that sample and we could say, do we like that? Do we want to keep them blank with the intention of filling those with future kids who win things? Um, or do we want to save a whole space of that for the whole side of the wall is, you know, you know, championships to come. Is you there know, well? We, is there any ability even to change out some of these? I guess that's all. Oh, so once the signage is on, it's on. Mm -hmm. So we would have to be careful if we had intentions of. I mean, we could certainly, I'm sure, cut something out and mm -hmm. or put something over top. But I think the intention would be this is what we have up, and so we really want to be thoughtful because I I don't think we have intentions of taking it back down. No, and, then, it's up. and then um, have we explored, if we're talking about in terms of the actual creative that we use, inspirational quotes, mm -hmm. et cetera, you yeah, know, so instead of just pictures? We've been collecting some of those. We've been thinking of also um, previous coaches quoted in newspapers, um, headlines from newspapers. Um, we have a nice couple quotes from Jules Prieva. We have quotes, obviously, in that in the Foots of a, of a Giant um, book. So we were thinking... Well, actually, the one wall, if you look at that picture there, the one facing us, the maroon wall facing us, we were thinking about as a quote slash headline wall. We were going to have a wall potentially dedicated to a, some quotes and, or a headline or something inspirational, an inspirational saying. That's not in this phase, but that was one of the thoughts that the group had, that we could fill a wall with a nice big quote or various quotes. So there's room on the other wall still to come up with those concepts in the future. And, and in the, that these pictures don't show, well it does, the bottom. So the bottom picture there, the bottom picture shows as you walk in, you'd see that moon wall and that would be, a, it's basically a wallpaper of a lot of pictures. Now in five years, would we want to change the wallpaper? We may, I mean, I think we're going to have to make decisions hopefully that we're going to be putting wallpaper up in some areas that will hopefully last a long time. And then there are other areas where we can add, there's, there's a lot of spaces where we can add, you know, future and, and other pictures. We do have screens. Uh, how many TV screens? Um, um, I think there was three, is it? So there would be, the plan is to have the center screen and with the R right. um, have to be a live feed so that you could watch games going on in the space um, if, you know, you didn't want to be outside for whatever reason, or you, you know, overflow. Um, and then this vertical screens would show uh, announcements, current pictures. So that was our, kind of one of our solutions was that's where we could run current pictures on, on the loop um, in this current those screens. And so then kids could see. Yeah, so those two screens there, you were coming in, and, and there could be pictures from <laughs> last weekend's, you know, volleyball tournament or the the, 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 the the last game or the marching band cup. It could be a whole host of different the, things that could be just playing there constantly. Um, and then, but those pictures behind there, that would be the wall that I think those pictures would hopefully last the test of time. Like right. this is a history that they'll, you know, we're not looking to change that wallpaper for a long time. So the, the other two screens could serve as like your digital fo photo yes. app, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Moore. Uh, two topics. Uh, number one, the $75,000 we um, are using for fund balance, does that cover all the phases or just this phase one of, you know, roughly one, two, and seven on the list of walls? Um, on the signage sign, with the caveat that there's also a technology side to that, I, I would. It's it's not going to cover everything. 
um, you know, w especially if you look at the quote we have for four, even if we upped it to nine and we added into that the technology, um, we might just make it, might just make it, but there's possible things that we might see we need as we move along, um, potentially furniture. I know that it says it, it shows it on that, that um, rendering, but we may need other furniture. Um, also, we talked about some exteriors uh, signage, and that might be a phase three, um, phase four, but there are, there are some discussions around do we need plaques that we could put in the, you know, the, the, on one of those big, uh, taller sort of um, lamppost type thing that talk about who Jules Prevost was, who Anthel Anki was, um, or you can just put one on the ground and then somebody could see, um, you know, read about her life, Ethel Anki's life, when they're playing on Anki Field. Those kind of things aren't part of this, but, you know, you, we would need to talk about budgeting for those if that's something that the board desires and the district desires that they want to do. That's fair enough. Um, I'm just remembering from our budget discussion one of the rationales for um, depleting our fund balance by 75000 in order to pay for this was the idea that this was akin to a capital-type expenditure um, and not an expenditure that would be continuing in, for, in future years. But, you know, it sounds like it costs more to kind of over and will kind of spread out over more years, which is fine, but, um, you know, that maybe seems to cut against the idea that we should use fund balance for this. Maybe it should have been part of the um, general fund budget without using fund balance. So um, now that we're learning more about that, that's, you know, something for the administration to take into account for the budget recommendation for this spring, which will be here before, before you know it. <laughs> and then um, the second uh, point I wanted to raise was I remember back to that October 27th, 2020 meeting when we first talked about the uh, Spirit Gallery, and a question that I think both I asked and Mrs. Solomon asked is whether this is just about athletics. So I'm maybe even going broader than um, Mrs. D Duffy's question. Um, d don't what about Band and Cheer? You know, what about Model UN? What about mm -hmm. you know, if the, the robotics team w win a trophy, could there be a robotic hand holding grasping that <laughs> on display? Um, Rad Reactors Workshop posters and photos, you know, if you, the, these, I mean, this is exciting and this is beautiful, but those photos are all athletics photos. But at the time, Mrs. Solomon and I asked, you know, is this uh, spirit gallery athletics or is it um, other aspects of our spirit at Radnor? And the answer we heard back from the administration is, no, we, we would hope to celebrate all of that. So I'm not sure if that is still the idea um, or if, you know, some of the discussions have taken it kind of back into the athletics, but I think you got a 9-0 unanimous vote on that extra 390,000 addition to the project, mm -hmm. um, in part because that answer was, this isn't just athletics, it's, it's everything we want to celebrate about, a Radnor spirit. So I would, I would offer that um, reminder to, as you continue to move forward on this. I think we, when we talked about that, we had discussed that, we talked about this, and as Dr. Bat Bat Bachelor mentioned, having a ripple effect throughout the school in terms of the spaces that we're using to display certain things. So right now we have a case for ultimate frisbee as you walk into the high school right so likely that that space that that case those materials would be repurposed and moved to the memorial the memorabilia in the spirit gallery there are going to be other cases like that that are going to open up spaces around the theater area you know where the where the the, the theater is and all those classes are going to open up. So there are going to be places where you could put those Model UN trophies and those robotics trophies and put displays elsewhere, potentially not in the spirit gallery, that would also highlight other extracurriculars besides sports. So I think we thought maybe there was a way to, once this is created, reclaim some of that space and then make it something else that would reflect those type of suggestions, which I think are very valid suggestions. Yeah. yeah, that's a great answer to the question. It is a little different, I think, than kind of how the discussion went October 27th, 2020. It's been a while since then. Um, but the overall point is just every student has something, and I would want everyone to feel like they are represented in our new exciting spaces and, and celebrated. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think what has happened as we've gone down this road now of actually trying to set it up and plan it is, you know, we discovered you know, there's some prime real estate in the front main entrance to the high school. And it's just very random who has a display cabinet and who doesn't. Um, and it's kind of random where there's band stuff and where there's ultimate Frisbee. Ultimate Frisbee has a really 
prime real estate. They, I mean, that is the that is the front entrance of your building is really, uh, I would say, you know, because with the auditorium and your main entrance hallway. Um, so if that gets moved, what goes there? And that might actually be a place that different groups might rather have a showcase than possibly in the Spirit Gallery. I mean, it, again, the Spirit Gallery has become a, a now vision of how do we look at the entire building and how do we balance? Because we're not going to have, right now, there's a lot of things all throughout the building. How do we best balance it throughout the entire building and trying to look at all the different areas? Um, so that has been part of the discussions. Is that yeah, accurate as the, sure. the, the group has moved forward? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, those are my only two questions. Thanks. Thanks. Very fair points, I think. And I, I, would, I would just piggyback on that, that, yeah, I mean, if, if we're going to be dedicating a specific area of the high school to be celebrating Radnor history, then it makes sense that that would comprise all kinds of um, school activities, you know, whether that's athletics or anything else. Uh, I'd like to uh, pass the baton, so to speak, over to Ms. Clark, if, if you'd like to give some input is this on how do yeah. i know oh yeah. the red okay um i don't know i have lots of different ideas i like the idea that we're asking the question is this all encompassing or is this just strictly for athletics um i can't even picture where the frisbee ultimate thing is that you're talking about and now i think about that and now i'm picturing where i am most of the day which is down on um it used to be called the basement but we've called it we now call it the garden level <laughs> I'll take credit for that. Brandy. Yeah. Stole it from us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, is that what this is too? Yeah. Yes, oh, okay, we're fond okay. of calling this the garden. Yes, <laughs> that's what we do. Yes. Among other, you know. Okay. Um, so then I'm thinking about in that area too, um, it would be exciting to put some things down there uh, just because sometimes it does feel a little like a basement. And, you know, then I think, well, do we talk to um, the art teachers and the art club and get some cool paintings down there? Um, I think so. I think this is a really great initiative to to start with, um, and I'm I'm interested in the all inclusive part for sure, especially with, you know, the book that we read this summer and the the magnets that we have in our classrooms. You belong, um, and really practicing what we're preaching. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, back to you, Mr. Petiti. Let's march forward here with our agenda. Okay. So thank you. We uh, got that. So, board leadership elections. This isn't really an informational uh, item that we have to um, go through it, it, to get it into the committee, discuss committee, so we can move to the board uh, in September. It's at election time again for PSBA's board leadership. Uh, electronic voting will be available from 12.01 a.m. September 9th through 5 p.m. October 29th. So, at the September 27th meeting, the board will be asked to vote for the 2023 PSBA officers through a roll call vote. And procedures for election of PSBA officers as authorized in the bylaws requires that each member entity cast one vote during the election period. Um, Mr. Pauling, the board secretary, will cast the vote for the board or on behalf of the board. And the board will need to decide by majority vote which candidates re will receive the board's vote for each office where there is more than one candidate. If a candidate is unopposed, the vote will be a consent agenda item on the regular business meeting agenda. So the leadership positions up for election in 2023 are president-elect for one-year term, Michael Gossert, Cumberland Valley School District. The asterisk next to names indicates that they've been endorsed and, and they demonstrate, quote, exceptional leadership at the local and state level. And they shall be considered for endorsement by the nominating committee. So those are the asterisks. Vice President Allison Mathis, North Hills. Central Zone Representative Julia Preston, Northern Tioga. Se Section C1 Advisor, Thomas Kurek, Kane Area School District. Section E2 Advisor, Karen beck -Pooley, Bethlehem Area. Section E4 Advisor, um, somebody named Amy Goldman, Radnor Township School District. Can I just, um, we yes. do not vote on, the only sectional advisor that I believe we are voting for is, is our own Ms. Amy. Ms. So we will not, the only vote we're required to take in terms of sectional advisor oh, is Amy. Thank you so. for clarifying that. That's Thanks. important. So, those are the those are the, the roster for across the state. Um, but it looks like we'll be having Ms. Goldman as um, on our consent agenda at the regular business meeting. So we wanted to 
bring that through to the committee, of course, before we move it along to the business meeting. So one more thing there, and you, you can go to the PSBA website and get information on the candidates. I believe um, Michael Gossett, well, I know he has a video in which he says why he's running, but that's the only, um, the only video I saw. But um, so there's an opportunity to learn more if you want to cast. Uh, on our agenda, are these the sole candidates or just the ones that are endorsed? Those are the ones that I received. They're the sole candidates. Sole candidates, right? Doesn't. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So it will only be on our consent agenda. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And that's another issue, but you know <laughs> that that we have all these positions unopposed. You know, there's not. Mm -hmm. Where's the pipeline of candidates? So. Any other thoughts from the committee? That's a good point. Okay. Thank you. All right. Lastly, one last um, informational item here. It's mostly going to be about the legislative platform. Um, you'll recall that we, as a committee, move forward certain items to, to, to uh, submit to PSBA to include on their 2023 legislative platform over the summer. Those items were moved along to the school board proper and the ones that the school board had um, agreed to submit were concerning gun safety, diversity in the workforce, support for secondary counseling, and nonpartisan school board elections. So those uh, proposals, w which I have here, um, were all submitted, as you see them, to PSBA by the deadline, July 20, by July 22nd, and now they're at a, a stage where they're going to be meeting the platform committee, PSBA platform committee meeting, is going to be, excuse me, meeting on September 17th to look at those proposals. And following the meeting, the proposals, the proposed 2023 legislative platform we posted on PSBA's website and provided to all delegates participating in the delegate assembly meeting. So at that meeting, and I will be happy to turn it over to Ms. Duffy to talk a little bit about the invitation that you have received to be a part of that and, and give some comments on behalf of our platform proposals. Sure, yes. Um, so I will be participating. Um, we were given the opportunity to advocate for our position in front of the committee. We have about 10 minutes. We will we have the opportunity to advocate for our positions, and then they 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 can ask questions during that public comment period. So um, I'm planning on attending. Mrs. Goldman's also planning on joining me. We're going to be joining via Zoom. We did have, up until right before this meeting, we were going to also be joined with a member from the Haverford School District. But after talking with them, they are actually, they had, they had missed the deadline for signing up. Um, they were unaware, but they were able to um, get a slot, so they're going to go on their own and also advocate. But just so you know, they they submitted two similar pro two proposals, um, one almost verbatim to our gun safety proposal, and then they also have one regarding um, school counseling. It takes a slightly different bent, but so uh, I think the at the end we said, well, wow, it'd be great for us to join forces and stand together in unity, but in some ways, we, this, if we're separate, we have two different opportunities to make the point and a little more time with um, to, to make our arguments. So we will be um, attending separately. Great. So, Ms. Duffy, will you um, and Mrs. Goldman represent all four of our proposals? Yes, I, I, you know, I think we need to talk a little bit about, you know, have a little pre-meeting, but yes, I will, that, okay. I will represent all four. Um, and, and anybody, I know, um, I do know that Mr. Moore um, was penned one of these, so, you know, any, if you want to reach out and we talk about what you want to make sure that we represent, you know, if we have a little pre-meeting, I'll do my best to represent thank us you. well. I just want to thank you. <laughs> And this is everyone here, and now I know some of you were very involved on this committee, um, particularly all oh, Dr. Babson, Mr. Moore, Ms. Duffy, Mrs. Goldman, and, um, very involved, spent a lot of time, and you deserve um, a thanks. And uh, I wish uh, you know these are I, I'm I wish us luck, but uh, I know we're in great hands. Yeah, I'd like to just add. Uh, 
My thanks to uh, Ms. Goldman and Ms. Duffy, really, for um, getting so involved in this. And it, it's something that we should have perhaps been involved in more previously, but I think going forward, we now have a kind of a template you know, for, for making this part of our, our regular business. I think that being able to influence the platform, uh, I, think, I think that's a nice thing for us to be doing, an important thing for us to be doing. And, and let me just say also, you know, if, if there's anything about, I might as well just mention, anything about um, item number one there, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to, to be available for any kind of commentary on that one. I appreciate that, Dr. Babson, and I'll reach out to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Just uh, quickly, just how the sausage is made. So the committee takes a vote. It's we don't see that. Like, how do we? How does it go? <laughs> so, uh, okay, go. I'm sorry. I'm, go ahead. I happen to have it all written down here. Um, so on the 17th is when the platform committee meets. Is when Ms. Duffy was mentioning there will be some testimony and co comments offered. Then the voting delegates from PSBA men member entities will take final action on the proposed platform recommended by the platform committee. And that assembly by those delegates is Saturday, November 5th. So the platform committee gives a pro the proposed platform. The delegates look at it and say, we adopt it. Or I'm supposing they can make um, amendments or um, rejections of it. I'd have to refresh my memory on the specifics, but I do believe even if they don't take our proposal, mm -hmm. there is another opportunity to advocate. And it, it may very well be at that del at the assembly. I, want I just fifth. have to confirm that. Okay. But I do, I do recall seeing that we had a second opportunity. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's right, Mrs. Duffy. And, you know, the platform committee is, it's a gatekeeper. It's a filter of sorts. They get all of these proposals. They might say some of them are not worth sending to the delegate assembly for a vote or not. Um, they might see, for example, that there's a Radnor gun safety proposal and a Haverford gun safety proposal. They could combine them and send a, a, some kind of joint proposal from the platform committee. They won't necessarily send Radners and Haverfords. Um, and they can come up with their own new proposals. And in, in, in having reviewed everything that's been submitted by school boards, the platform committee members themselves can vote to add something um, to it. So they do a lot of tweaking and then send it to the delegate assembly. Um, and yes, I do think you're right. Even if it doesn't make it out of the platform committee, you can show up at the delegate assembly and you know raise your hand and uh, stand on the table and advocate for your uh, position one more time. And just as a reminder, I think it is Mr. Moore and Mrs. Dunn, right? Uh, I'm also. Oh, and be there. great, yep. Dr. Babson, awesome, be great. Yeah. On the uh, in November. November for yeah for the delegate yeah. assembly vote. I yeah. believe, right? Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you all. Downtown Mechanicsburg. Downtown Mechanicsburg. So I've heard. Okay. So I think that does that for that particular item. Should we move over to the legislative update? Uh, for the sake of time, um, I can tell you that <laughs> the um, one item that I did um, pinpoint was um, Representative Mastriano's. Um, Senator Mastriano's, um, excuse me, um, proposal, SB 1288, um, to amend the public school code in school security, providing for school safety certification to employees, allowing an employee to possess a firearm or other lawful weapon in the course of employment, um, provides that an employee of a school with entity can submit a request uh, on a form prescribed by the department for a school safety certificate to the administration of the school district and upon receipt of request the school district shall grant a school safety certificate to the employee within 45 days and there's more to that um, so we got while well, that report from the DCIU Delaware County Intermediate Unit which included this proposed bill called enhancing classroom security um, it has the most <laughs> recent update for this proposed bill as introduced and referred to the Senate Education Committee on July 21st we did receive information from PSBA that it has been informed, PSBA, that SB 1288 is being considered for the upcoming Senate Education Committee meeting on September 20th. And that meeting does not have an agenda yet. However, according to PSBA, PSBA has been told that the bill is in need of a, quote, comprehensive amendment. And we were advised not to put too much stock into the current version of the bill. So the feeling is that election politics are at work as a bill this controversial is not going to get done this fall. Because I'll just point out the, the bill that's currently written 
would not give us local control over whether or not we wanted to grant employees the right to bear a gun. It says shall, so it would be a requirement by law, so obviously very controversial. Yeah, even, uh, even more aggressive than what we saw back in spring of 2018, some potential legislation. And if you want to know, um, get a sense of what the Radar community thinks of this kind of idea, tune into the April 24th, 2018 business meeting. Um, Mrs. Duffy, I think you spoke at that meeting before you were ever on the school board, as did many members of our community. I think I'd just like to underline a point of relevance here, which is that this is connected to our legislative platform proposal document. Number, item number two is about gun safety. So I, I think this just kind of underlines the kind of work that we, that we aim to do in this committee is to highlight ways that what is happening in Harrisburg is relevant to us right here in Radnor, so. And uh, I can guarantee in October, a November meeting will be after the election that we will see a lot more of this type of um, activity uh, given it's high noon in uh, Pennsylvania for uh, elections. Any further comments on this update? Okay, Mr. Bettini. That's all I have. Okay, great. All right, so why don't we just circle back. Any public comments? Any new business? Okay, so with that, we will adjourn. Thank you very much. Thank you.